Kawhi. Hi everyone, this is Kawhi Felting here and I'm going to go back to basics and do a little beginner series to show you the very basics of needle felting. This is a great tutorial for those of you who have never needle felted before. We're going to make this cute little bear. Needle felting involves poking wool fiber with a needle repeatedly until the fibers become tangled and mat it into a somewhat firm mass. You can use a needle to mold it into any object of your liking. So some of the things I made using needle felt are this watermelon, a hamster, uh, this is a more complicated piece, this is my kawaii felting logo. I've even made this Totoro purse using needle felting and wet felting. Okay, so let's start out with an easy project. I have this book called Cleaner Mascot, so we're going to make this little bear. To make this bear, you're gonna need about three grams of yellow wool, three plastic eyes, and some dark brown wool for the mouth. We're also going to need a felting needle and a felting mat. If you don't have a felting mat, you can use a, a large bath towel and just fold it up. You just need something that protects your needle from the, the hard tabletop surface. You'll also need an awl and some glue to attach the eyes. So let's get started. Before you start, one tip that I have is to sort of rub the wool up between your hands and try to tangle the fibers before you even start poking and that will speed up your felting time. Another tip is that if you're going to make something like a round ball that's going to be relatively large, start with just a small piece of wool and roll it up into a ball like this. Poke this piece into a ball first and then add additional layers on top of it. So let's start, start poking. And when you poke, you wanna poke straight up and down. Like you don't wanna poke and then move the needle and take it out because that will cause your needle to break. You just wanna poke in and pull it straight out in the direction that you inserted it. You also do not want to bend your needle while you're poking. Don't put pressure on it like that because that will cause your needle to break. You just want to insert it straight into the wool and straight out. If you try to insert it and then take it out in a different direction, that will cause pressure on your needle and it will cause your needle to bend and possibly break. You also want to try to work slowly and carefully so that you do not poke your fingers because it's really painful to be stabbed by this needle. You wanna put your fingers in front of the needle and poke away from your fingers as opposed to holding it like this and poking like that because you might poke this finger in the back. If you have access to these, I recommend getting them. These are felting thimbles and I use these in all my projects to help protect my fingers. They're made of really thick leather and they really do help to protect your finger. So when you first sit down to needle felt, the fibers are gonna be really loose and fluffy and it'll seem like you're not really going in or you're poking, but just keep poking the wool and be careful not to side your fingers. And the more you poke the wool, the more crossings will form between the wool fibers and your piece will get smaller and thinner. So if you're not sure about how much wool you're going to need, you want to start with a smaller piece and then wrap additional wool around it to make it bigger. Another tip that I have is to fill your larger pieces up with acrylic fiber or polyfill instead of using the wool for the whole piece because wool can be a little expensive and if you use polyfill instead to fill it up, then it'll make things a little bit cheaper. So remember that needles are really delicate and they can break easily. Good to keep backup needles on hand because you don't want to be in the middle of a project and then have your needle break on you. Okay, so this is what I have after about three minutes of poking this acrylic fiber. I think if you're using wool, it would take about five minutes to get to this consistency. It's like a cotton ball and it's really squishy. And for this piece, I'm not going to make it really firm. This is supposed to be used as a cleaning sponge and it's supposed to be a little squishy and puffy. So I'm just going to leave it like this and I'm going to wrap it layers of wool on top of it. So you just take some more wool and then spread it out like that between your hands. And then we're going to place this in the center and just wrap the wool around it. Needle felting can be really time consuming, but it's also a really forgiving process because it's difficult to, to make mistakes. So if you poke the wool in the wrong spot, don't worry about it because it takes a lot of pokes to make a huge impact. And even if you go overboard and start poking things a little too much, you can add more wool to the project to just build it up and fix whatever mistakes you've made. Um, another thing to note is that the needle felted fibers will stick together without any glue or sewing. It can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to make a small piece, like a heart, or a star to an hour or two or more to make more complicated pieces. So it is a time consuming process. So just poke your wool and rotate your piece like this. Okay, so 
think I've been poking for about seven minutes and this is what my wool looks like. The surface is not that smooth as you can see there are some dents from the needle. And I'm going to add another layer of wool. So I have about this much wool left and I'm going to use that to make the ears. So to smooth out the surface, you can just add another layer of wool like this on top of the wool that you felted. And just gently poke it down. So what am I doing when I poke? I'm stabbing the needle into the wool and these little barbs in the needle are ripping and tearing up the fibers and causing them to tangle. And that's what causes the wool to mat together. So when you're trying to create a round ball, you wanna poke all over the piece uniformly and evenly. You don't wanna to focus too much on one spot because you'll create an indentation. So at this point, my wool is getting a little denser. You wanna work slowly and you don't wanna force your needle into the wool to avoid breaking your needle. I'm gonna use my felting pen to just even this piece out. Um, I think that when you use a felting pen, it just helps to smooth out bumps in the wool. A felting pen will also help speed up the process significantly of felting. This is how big it is compared to my hand. And now we're gonna make some ears for the bear. I'm gonna break off a couple of small pieces of wool for the ears. And one mistake that a lot of people make is to use too much wool for the small details. So you really don't want to overdo it and you want to make sure that they're about the same size before you start felting because it's easier to judge how much wool you've used at this stage than it is later on. So when I'm making a, a little piece like the, the ear, I like to felt the wool flat onto the mat and start tangling the fibers and then I'll use my needle to pull the fibers in and shape the wool into whatever I'm trying to make. So I'm just going to poke it like this piece, turn it over, hook on the other side, and then fold it up into the shape of a little barrier. So see how this ear is a little lopsided? Um, this piece needs to be poked in a little bit more. So I'm just going to keep poking there until it goes into So when you're making small details like ears and arms and legs, you want to leave one end of the piece fluffy so that you can attach it to the main piece. Um, this fluffy wool will tangle onto the main piece and help the small piece stick. So I'm going to check the size of it against my main piece and so that's how big it is and I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to work on the other piece. Here's my two little bear ears ready to attach to the main body. Since I have some leftover yellow wool, I'm just going to add it to the main body. And I'm going to set aside a little bit of wool in case I needed to attach the ears and take the rest of the wool and just sort of tear it up between my fingers and make it into a little sheet like this. And then wrap it around the main piece just so I can use up my wool. And you want to make sure it's evenly spread out. You don't want any lumps and bumps like this because we're going to have to smooth that out. And just poke. When you're attaching pieces, you either want to create an indentation in the main body using your needle, or you can take some scissors and just cut a little indentation. So I'm going to put one ear right there and the other one right about here. There's one indentation. And then there's another indentation. So take the fluffy end of your ear and stick it in the indentation that you just made. I'm gonna put my felting thimbles on because it's really easy to poke yourself here. So when you're attaching pieces, you wanna be very careful not to poke yourself. Stick the fluffy side into the hole you made with your needle and then poke like this to attach it. So there we have the ear. And now we're gonna attach the other one. I've attached my ears. This one's a little crooked. It's a little bit more forward than that one. So I'm just going to push it back a little bit and poke. So here I'm getting a little bit of an indentation. And to fix that, I'm going to take a little bit of the extra yellow wool that I, I didn't use, stick it in the hole, and then poke down. There. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to add a face to this. If you want, you can use a disappearing ink pen to mark the face, or you can just eyeball it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna put the nose right about here, and then the two eyes right here. And then I'm gonna take my awl or a pokey tool and just stick it in there and make the hole bigger. And let's see if this fits. Put one eye right here. take a 
little bit of red pull and give it a very cute smile. So when you're making facial details, you really only need a tiny, tiny bit of wool. So probably even less, a wisp of wool will do. Maybe about that much wool. Twist it up into a straight line and then hold it into place where you want to attach it. So I'm going to attach the center first. Just pull gently and then I'm going to pull up the sides using my needle. And then I'm going to trim off these little pieces on the edges and you have your bear. So my bear's smile is a little bit lopsided. So I'm going to add a little bit more red wool to, the, to this side. So you just want to add a little bit of wool at a time. Black eye pins are kind of loosey-goosey, so if you want to, you can just add a little bit of glue to the end. Stick it into your needle felt. I'm going to give the bear a little bow. So let's take a little ball of red wool. To felt it into a bow, I'm going to felt it flat onto the mat. And then use my needle and just sort of poke it into the, a little bow shape. As you can see, the reverse side is really fluffy, and that's okay because that will help the bow stick to the bear when we're done. Okay, it's kind of frizzy, so I'm just gonna trim off some of that frizz using my scissors. Shape it a little bit more. Okay, does it look like a bow? You can shape it further after you attach it, so just attach it to the bear's head in the center and then shape it into a bow. Fan these edges out a little bit. So when you want to shape something, just poke repeatedly in the spot where you want to create an indentation or like shape something, make something narrow. So now, this is my little hello bear. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you want to see more. Bye!